Good evening, everyone. Picking back up on the one barn. So far, I've gotten a little bit more put together, but we're going to continue on with that. But before I do, I'm going to show you the little tool that I made and tell you a little bit how I made it. It's real simple. And I was skeptical if it was going to work. Didn't know if the size pipe I picked out was going to be correct or not, but <clears throat> it seemed to work for that one. For the 288 seal so thought I would share it with everybody thought it was interesting thought y'all might like it seemed like a few people liked it anyway but uh <clears throat> got me a light we'll try that out see how that works let me know how it's working if it's working better or not if you see better so forth and so on Hope everybody's doing all right. Everybody's well and and wow, man, well and good and <clears throat> and all that good stuff. So flip the camera around, get y'all in here for a peek. Let's see about this light deal. And they said, let there be light. All right. <clears throat> Pick it back up on this bad boy. Put the cylinder on it. Put my homemade decomp plug in it. And, uh, that's what we got so far. <clears throat> Made my studs, and I think I got one of them in there just slightly crooked. But it'll do. Couldn't find the bolts that I wanted to use, so I may do. But next thing is, I'm going to put this in here. I've got an OEM gasket. That I am going to use moto seal on to help glue it in place. I don't know how much I trust that little thing. Most of them have been in pretty poor shape that I've taken out. So, give her a go. The old college try, as they say. <coughs> Sometimes this mess is terrible. Seems like it's got a lot in common with the uh, NICs. Well, I could look at that mess and have it from fingertip to elbow and my eyebrows and everywhere else. That mess don't think it come off neither. At least not easy. stuff I think I hung in a slot
this saw here didn't have this type of reed block in it. It had this thing here. Didn't quite like it. So I had extra ones. This is a used one that seemed to be in fair shape. So I like it better. Could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Quite sure it won't be the last neither. Come on. I do have factory base gaskets for this thing, but I'm not going to use them. They're like non-existent. There's a lot of the parts for this saw. You can get pistons for them. The only place I've seen them is Little Red Barn. They seem to do okay. I don't know if they changed anything with them, but on <clears throat> this particular type of lumbar, it, uh, you had to take a stick your handy dandy Dremel and get in there and Open up the bottom of the piston to clearance the crank. Oh, and I had to hunt down these things, the little screws. So I was able to find them at the hardware store, so they wasn't no big deal. The lumbar you see in <clears throat> the cutting video I got posted on up here. That saw has one of those pistons in it. And as of last time I checked it, it still looked pretty good. So maybe it'll be all right. Anybody home? Oh, all right, just checking. All right, let's find the tool on. That be it. in there for them. Those are cool. And that looks really similar to the XL and Super XL. I believe a little bit of modification the home light coal will probably work on here. We're also going to put a new wire in that. Get our 
flywheel. The handle for re redo the recall. Carburetor's already been rebuilt. There's only a hundred videos of that out there. That's why I'm replacing this, just because. Well, it's broken, and I've got some wire that I like to use, and we'll put a new boot on it, too, because that's pretty ugly. There's the box I was looking for. That'll go on there. That's for a clutch. I think they were on the side cover. Well, I didn't have one. I had a steel cover on it. For whatever reason. Handle bolts. Might stick another one there. One starter pole, two starter pole, and the spring is definitely worse for wear. And the XL and Super XL one spring, pole spring will work on here too. They're a single coil where these are too cold but they still seem to do good that's the piece we're looking for them two tiny screws there that's for our handle these are for a tank We'll screw here. Starter pole. See, two coals. So go on the handle. That's for the starter pole that holds the screen on the flywheel. That's for the clutch. Which is right there. <clears throat> These four screws here go in here to hold a handle on. Ooh, got a little mag rock. These screws here go here. Let's see. Yeah. Go here. And the other four hold the starter cover on. Y'all like the length of the videos? They too long? I know they're kind of jumbled around and stuff. One of these is for the clutch. One of them's for the flywheel. Goes with that. I think there's supposed to be one more here somewhere. That one there is for the automatic oiler person portion. They'll attach. I guess it helps if I get the frame. It'll hook into here, then it hooks into the carburetor. Luckily, all of our little boots are in good shape. I do got replacements if need be, but them appear to be in excellent shape. Put a little 
lubrication on that bad boy. Uh, before I forget again. <clears throat> Here's a little seal remover. Removal tool. So basically this is a half inch pipe. Black iron. I uh, think it was four and a half inches. I cut the threads off one end right at the base of the threads right there. This is a metric coupling nut and a bolt to match. And I'm sorry, but I can't remember my threads I used. And this is just a another long bolt that I picked up and cut the head off one end, threads off the other, and just kind of beveled it just to make it look prettier. And then... Lord of mercy, that's a lot of thread. <clears throat> and then just bevel the end of the bolt where it sits nicely in the crank. That's all. Then tried hardening it a little bit. So far, so good. But that's it in a nutshell. <clears throat> and then, of course, just welded it together. And I had to, to go over the 288 crank. I had to use the old grinder and open that up just a hair. And smooth it back out just to be sure we didn't scuff a crank up or nothing but yeah I'm pleased with it for 12 bucks can't complain Right. <clears throat> I'll pick back up where I was. So I'm getting sidetracked again. I am gonna lock tight this stuff. Just because these things have no anti-vibe and if not they probably would vibrate out over time. Noticed that hole before. Right there, that's a new one. Let's give this <coughs> line a little wipe down and flush her out. And See what it feels like some of the bar roll is still clean clinging for dear life something I'm pretty good at is forgetting to put this line on Done it in a while, so getting better at it. Whew. A little toasty in here, I believe. Just about didn't leave myself no room there. Oh, 
fun one. Got new line, replacement lines too, so it's all it takes just a little snug, nothing much. This is going to be the pain in the butt. Always is. Well, this video is already shot up to twenty minutes, so hmm. Guess my intros are a little on the long side, huh? You say just working slow, ain't in no hurry. I could have this thing put together in, in you know, an hour and a half or so. <clears throat> Otherwise, so it's not a terrible job. It's not hard. It's pretty easy. But sitting here jabbering. Takes up a little bit more time. But here's our tank. So we got the rim lines. A little soft, but not too bad. The easiest way I found to put a line on there is just unscrew that and pop it on. And these things, they got these funny umbrella duckbill valves, and this one's gone. I think I've got one left. Guy that mini valve hooked me up with a few of them. Otherwise, I've got to buy at least, I think, a minimum of $400 worth of them. And it's a couple hundred of them little things. And you had to need for that many yet. I guess if that occurs, then I shall do so. Take a little Smurf juice on it. There we go. realize I've got some screws that are MIA three of them oh, well if I can't find them I'll dig some more out
tank's on. Now, this is where this little aggravating thing goes. Come on now. Snuckies. Finally. No, I didn't torque it down super tight. Just trying to push down to help alleviate a worse of a boo boo. That one went in a lot easier than most of them do. This little line is something I found that can wreak havoc. Not really the line per se, but <clears throat> there should be a check valve or something right here. For whatever reason, they go bad or whatever, and these things like to pull oil from the oil cup into the motor one of my others it uh it decided it wanted to go bad and it completely filled the cylinder it just locked it slam up it wasn't a happy camper at all it's for a hold down 
that it appears to not have anymore. Well, we're going to stop this video off because it's 30 minutes long. And uh, I'm going to come back with a coal, coal wire on it, adjust the points, put flywheel and stuff on it, figure out if it's got spark because I failed to do so beforehand. And um, see you on the next one. You have a great evening, be safe, be kind. Can't be good, be good at it. Later.